Hey guys, welcome to a special bonus episode of Let's Talk, a podcast for women from the Gospel Coalition Podcast Network. I am Jackie Hill Perry, and I am here with the beloved saints uh, by the names of Jasmine Holmes and Melissa Kruger to talk about living life, uh, the Christian life to be exact, in a pandemic. Uh, The last time we were together was a little while back, Melissa. It feels like it was a long while back. It sure does. We were together recording these last January. We had plans for the year, Mm. hopes for the year, dreams (laughs) dreams for the year. And then this little disease happened called COVID and all of our worlds changed dramatically. I remember, I think I'd heard about it in January. Um, My husband actually had ordered mask and I laughed at him. Oh, he was ahead of the game. He was ahead of the game. He had ordered mask. And then in February, he bought Clorox wipes and hand sanitizer. And again, I laughed at him. (laughs) And I was like, okay, I guess I'll send those to school next year. You know, when they asked for all that stuff Mm -hmm. to come in for school. And then I was hugging and kissing him and saying, you are the best husband ever when March hit because we had all these supplies. Mm -hmm. So tell me how your life changed dramatically. I guess it all started in March, really, yeah. when everything changed. How, what, what happened in your worlds? I had a book launch party planned in March, which it went, we had the party. And then the next day, Mississippi was like, no more gatherings over, I think it was like 50 people. And then that next Sunday there was no church and then it was quick we didn't go back to school after spring break and everything just changed really quickly yeah it was like a daily yeah every day it got a little bit worse and Mm -hmm. a little bit worse and and I didn't expect it to do that because I I remember seeing it on the news and was like oh two people got COVID in New York and it's like oh okay you know (laughs) until uh I was at home and I had an event cancellation Uh, My assistant had called me. He was like, hey, they canceled this event because of COVID. And then the following event was like, yeah, they canceled this event because of COVID. And then the third event, oh, they canceled this event. And it wasn't the cancellation of the events. It was the, oh, this is for real. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, this is a serious little thing. And then my my daughter's school uh, sent an email like, yeah, they won't be returning back to school. And I'm like, oh, so this... So what we, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just like, I don't, I don't know what this means. I've never seen anything like this before. And how do you even plan for that? Yeah. It was like nothing I've ever seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were, we were getting ready to go on spring break. We had been looking forward to this time with our kids and we were actually, my husband grew up skiing. And so we were taking them all the way to Colorado. We've been looking forward to this, all this stuff. He calls the ski place we were going that day and they said, we are committed to remaining open. This is a Saturday. We fly all the way out there. We drive up the mountain and we get, as soon as we're opening the door to this condo place we rented, right. I get the blip. The governor has closed all <laughs> the ski slopes in the oh state. My goodness. And we were like, this is for real. And then we felt like the worst parents. Like we have been on these planes. We felt like germs were everywhere Mm -hmm. and we were hand sanitizing everything. And I mean, it was just so stressful. Mm -hmm. Like we got home and that's when the kind of quarantine started. And we were like, good, we're never going anywhere again. Mm -hmm. Because it was such a, yeah, we literally flew out there. We ate, we we laughed. We're like, we flew to Colorado to have a meal at Chipotle and then we flew all the way back. (laughs) That's wow. That was, That's like, memorable. It was, yeah, it was, but it, it went so quickly. Yeah. It was just this, you know, and I've never seen anything like it. I don't know. I mean, like this, I no. mean, 9-11, I remember that very distinctly, but this changed everyone's life mm-hmm. in the whole world. Mm-hmm. I mean. And then when you start to see the, the rise in deaths. I think that's what sobered me up where it wasn't just like this novel virus that's affecting, you know, our uh, toilet tissue supply. It was like, no, like this is like, this is destroying. That sounds dramatic, but truly this is changing people's lives and families. And the fact that people weren't able to attend funerals, you know, they were putting bodies in mass graves. And I'm just like, this is, this feels like a movie mm-hmm. that I didn't pay to watch. 
so it affected so many things in all of our lives. How did it specifically affect your work? You were hearing from your assistant, you know, pretty early on, it sounds like. March, hey, yeah. These things are canceled. But how did it affect what you were doing work-wise, family-wise? How did it affect your life? I mean, I started teaching online. And we had our eighth graders, we had a all kinds of things planned. Like we're going to get into a Harry Potter book club this summer and, you know, watch all the movies together and all of that just left. And then I think probably Jackie can relate to this, but being a writer and trying to write from home Impossible. with two Young children. children. <laughs> it's, yeah, just, it's just like, not a thing. How is this going to happen? Like how, what are we going to do? And every day my four-year-old is like, hey, mom, where are we going today? And I'm like, nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> nowhere <laughs> going in the living room bucko yeah it's gonna be I, great did you get together with other people or i mean you know because that for me when i had young kids was a huge outlet to like go see one other mom with a young kid but did you did you stay away i mean during that or initial season i feel like everybody was much stricter they were march yeah. and april i took a lot of like walks with other moms because um, yeah. there was a time where I definitely, I remember sitting in therapy and I was like, I just feel like I'm falling apart and my life is meaningless. And she was like, I, th I, th I think maybe you need to get out of the house. And I was like, but it's coronavirus. She was like, put on a mask and get out of the, like, get out of the house. I was mm. like, okay, I'll try. But yeah, it, I definitely needed to be more um, purposeful about removing myself from just the regular Every day, because every day just starts to kind of look the same and yeah. flow into each other. Yeah, I couldn't figure out when it was the weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you don't even have church. No. Yeah, that grounds right. you. And right. when that went online, yeah. it was just so weird. I mean, I went way too long without a shower. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. <laughs> Is I, it Tuesday or Saturday? Yeah, I don't know. I put on real clothes because I'm. We're back at work now. We're teaching in masks and face shields. And so I put on real pants to go to work and my husband was like, you look so beautiful today. And I was like, I have a waistband <laughs> on my pants. It's not elastic. <laughs> it's like, wow, real clothes. Yeah, I know. I, I can know. do this. I can do this. I can brush my hair. <laughs> yeah. I think for me, I think uh, I have several jobs, if you will. But one of them is obviously traveling to teach and speak. And so those cancellations, I want, I wasn't even necessarily mad at because, you know, it does get exhausting to fly all of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the, the major adjustment was I'm also a writer and like Jasmine said, trying to write with a five-year-old and a two-year-old that wants everything all of the time, even if unnecessary, she took my two graham crackers. All right, take two back. I don't know. Like it just, it just made writing or concentration difficult. Mm -hmm. But I also realized that the lack of being able to go out and explore and do life with other people, it affected my creativity. For sure. And I didn't know why. I was like, I can't think imaginatively as mm -hmm. I as I used to. I don't know what this is. And it's like, oh, because I'm doing the same thing every day with the same people. And so there's something about being in community and just exploration that just, I don't know, was inhibited by this. That's a really good point. You yeah. forget about how much happens when you're in conversation with Absolutely. people. And yeah. like one little comment someone says mm -hmm. sparks an idea. Mm -hmm. And then you think, oh, I should go research that more mm -hmm. and think through that more. Yeah. And it's like we forget when you're with the same four or five people all the time. Mm -hmm. That's a really limited perspective. Yes. And we've stopped talking because what else is there to say at this point? Right. You know. Right. Did Very you wash true. your hands? Do you have sanitizer in your bag? Got your mask on? It's like a COVID exposure is like the most excitement that anybody has right now, which is so awkward. You're like, oh, I, we had a COVID, like one of our um, relatives got COVID and we saw them. And so we had to go get a test and everything. And I was like, this is, is this is so bad that I'm like, wow, okay, this is exciting. I'm like, go out of the house and I got to get a test. Like, let's, okay, let's see what's going on. And I was like, wow, my life is, is dull. The fact when, that that's like an event. Become the, like, yes, I was like, while I was there, I was like, could you like check my thyroid? Let's talk. <laughs> How did y'all churches, uh, yeah, navigate it all? And I'm only learning this via Twitter, but it seemed like everybody's churches kind of, you know, navigated this differently, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, we've had, um, we went online. We've just started having like a few test groups of people go back a couple months ago. 
And so now it's like you register to go to church Mm. and when all the seats are filled and they're filled and the rest of us have to go online at home Mm. Um, and they're doing some Zoom stuff, some social distance stuff. And yeah, it's just been just weird, just weird. Yeah, we were fortunate that we already had a setup to record it. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I mean, because it's not like it's being played anywhere right. during the week. But they already had the setup. So that was nice. When we initially began, we were all online. Mm-hmm. And then I feel like we went, We they started going back. Thankfully, we have a huge sanctuary. Mm-hmm. And so it can probably hold 1,500. Mm-hmm. So they could have 400 in there, mm-hmm. really socially distanced. And it's, it's a tall ceiling, so you feel like the air. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not breathing yeah, in everyone's yeah. air. Mm-hmm. And they just ask people to wear a mask, but it's been the sign up. You know, so like mm-hmm. this week, Mike tried to sign up by Tuesday. It was already full. Oh my goodness. And so it's that weird, oh, we can't go to church. We, mm-hmm. We're online this week. Yeah. So you go back and forth about what you can do. But it's been nice to just have some break to get mm-hmm. to go sometimes, even mm-hmm. if we yeah. don't go every week. But how are y'all doing it with young kids? Because do they have nursery or you just take them in there? We haven't been back. Well, our okay. church isn't open yet. Yeah, okay. Back. Yeah. yeah. Um, they do like the Zoom sermon thing. I will say, uh, you know, some people might think that this is not being loyal. It was kind of fun to venture into uh, the pews of different churches because of this. And so churches that I don't visit or pastors that I know of. So like Charlie Dates Church in Chicago, mm-hmm. I would zoom in and watch his services. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I feel like I'm, you know, part of a Chicago church plan now. And so I think that was kind of cool to be able to just see and be edified by like different church leaders yeah. around the country that I wouldn't otherwise listen to on a Sunday morning. Yeah. It's been cool to see just the creativity of people in ministry coming up with new like concepts and pushing things out. Like I'm even thinking about your pastor's podcast, mm-hmm. Windows and Mirrors. Yeah. I've started reading the Bible in a year with them and I don't know if I've never stuck with a reading the Bible in a year plan ever. Like never. I've started them <laughs> like throughout my life. When do you stop? I usually stop after Genesis, I'm gonna be real with you. <laughs> I like I get past the creation. You don't story. even get to Exodus. No, because I'm just like I want to read. I want to go to Colossians. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like I'm just like I don't want to. I, I want to go, go somewhere else. I want to go after the resurrection. Right, right. I'm just like I just want to. I just want to be every. But I we are in Numbers. We're at the end of Numbers. Good like, job. Look at me go. I'm at the end of Numbers. But so is it chronological? It is. is. Oh, that's hard. It is because you don't get to the New Testament normally to like October. Right. <laughs> Right, which is like, I'm like, I don't know. I And I'm trying to be more stable in my Bible reading because normally I'm very, like, emotionally, like, I just want to be in the Psalms today. Like, I just want to be, I want to be inspired by Ruth right now. <laughs> and so it's good. But I I do think that, like, if I, if it hadn't been for the pandemic, I may not have. did something that I just, I had time and mm-hmm. I was looking for more things to listen to and things to be involved in. And, you know, that's been one blessing. Yeah, that's a good question. What are the blessings of the season? Because I think there are some. Oh, I yeah. mean, I know for me, you know, I had just sent my daughter off to college when we were all meeting before, and I thought, you know, she'll never be home again for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I didn't expect to be homeschooling college. Mm-hmm. Like, that was definitely never on my plan. Yep. But it was so great to have her back. She was supposed to be, she was going to be in Indonesia this summer, Um doing missions work Mm -hmm. and instead she worked at chick-fil-a you know and she got to do that and be here but i got to see her every day yeah and so it was it was actually a real blessing Mm -hmm. to have that time that didn't think would come again Mm -hmm. i feel like i kind of hit the jackpot about kids ages you know i have a 13 year old i have a 16 year old and i had a 19 year old they were fun to have around and they're actually enjoyable i get not everybody wants their teenagers in their house Mm -hmm. all the time but we we got to do things like puzzles you know we sat and did puzzles when do you do that you know we never just had time together and so that's one thing i was thankful for yeah i think it's a it's a few things i think uh the first is it's kind of like a forced rest Um, because I was thinking about myself this year versus myself last year and I don't have the same anxieties. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't have the same amount of deadlines and things to do. I feel so much more at ease, uh, than I was. And 
that's delightful. Um, I think the second thing is I've actually had more time with my children, though I'm self-employed. And so, you know, I think I have more time with them more than the average person that might have a nine to five. Mm -hmm. I still wasn't as present as I could be because even at home I was working. And so I was like, huh, I'm not as like irritated by them as much. And that's only because I was more irritated because they weren't a mainstay in my schedule, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And so Mm -hmm. they often felt more like an inconvenience than a joy. But now it's like, sure, you can go to Target with me and I won't be bothered by you. And that sounds negative, but that's just, that's just what it is, you know? Well, and it's with, cause autumn is two, two. And I feel like Langston is going to be two in December, but that's just such a changing like mm-hmm. they change so much mm-hmm. between that, like eighteen months and two year, two years old, and I've really, really been enjoying like watching his little personality yeah. form and more so, more up close and personal. And I, like you, I mean, I'm only I only work outside the home two days a week, so mm-hmm. I'm with them all the time. But even just that extra measure of being with them, even more with the pandemic, I've seen. I'm like, oh, you have kind of a cool personality. Mm-hmm. Like, I really, you have a good, you have a good sense of humor for for a baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was interesting with with Eden, who's five, when she, uh, when her school went virtual or not. It was interesting to see her and her sister's relationship change, mm-hmm. and it was observable. It was like, oh, they're like way closer mm-hmm. than they've ever been, and I didn't even notice that they weren't that close. But it makes sense. Eden's at school. Autumn's at home, but now they're together and they actually miss each other. And Eden will come down the steps for breakfast and they'll hug. And it's just the it's the cutest little thing. I say, oh, this is <laughs> this is nice. I like you know, family like fellowship. Each other. Yeah. yeah, it's I know. What well, the other thing I liked seeing in my neighborhood, I never saw this many people walking. Oh yeah, or riding yes. their bikes. You'd yes. see whole families riding your bikes. I never used to That's see true. that because outside is a, a vacation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it was like the world stopped, but out there, hmm. but people's home life was better mm-hmm. in some ways. I mean, mm-hmm. they were actually spending time together. Because would y'all would y'all say that like I don't know that this pandemic has has made the simple things special again. You know, yeah, meeting sure. with your friends, walking outside, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. Going to church. Yeah. I yeah. don't take it for granted. Oh, the first yeah. time I walk back in the doors of the church, which some Sundays, you know, you're like, I'd like to sleep in mm-hmm. and I'd like to not go. And you feel like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. You know, to walk in and get to sing with other Christians mm-hmm was such a gift you realize wow what a privilege to get to do this right it's made the normal things feel special yes Mm -hmm. yeah i think it's also reminded me of the privileges that i have because not everybody's home is a safe environment not everybody Mm -hmm. has high-speed internet to be able to keep doing work not everybody was able to not some people lost their jobs some people have lost loved ones some some single moms have lost their help and so I, it's shown me just the amount of privilege that I take for granted on a on a day to day basis. Because honestly, our lives have changed a lot, but they haven't changed as much as other people's lives have been forced to change because sure. of the pandemic. So I've definitely been reminded to be more grateful and more prayerful for other folks. Because I mean, I've seen pictures on Twitter of like kids having to go to a local fast food restaurant to get Wi-Fi to do school, you know, like just in the fact that we have so many resources at our disposal is something that I I took for granted a lot more before the pandemic Yeah, um, that I'm trying to be more grateful for now. Cause I told, I mean, our paychecks have not been disrupted, Mm. you know, our, our help hasn't really been disrupted. Like, so there are a lot of things just to be grateful for. Man. Yeah, because that's been hard. Mm-hmm. And I think particularly, I've read some reports that women's work in particular has been greatly affected. In what way? Um, mainly because kids are home. Mm. So it seems like it's affected them more mm-hmm. in the sense of a lot of them have had to either leave their jobs mm-hmm. in order to manage the children. But if you're a single mom mm-hmm. you know, and you've got all of a sudden a six-year-old and an eight-year-old home, how are you juggling online school, trying to work your job, yep. 
get, getting to it. You know, women, I think, are bearing a really specific burden mm-hmm. in this time. I don't know if you felt this. I felt this. I've oh, told my husband, sure. sometimes it's just the mental weight. Yeah. Because my job continued because we already work remotely. I was yeah. laughing. I was like, I'm a little bit worried because my normal job is like a pandemic job. Yeah. <laughs> like I, sit, yeah. I sit in my office by myself all day and we were already Zooming. Yeah. Like right. we already did that. Right. And so, but then I had my kids home and when the internet would go out Mm -hmm. and their school stops Mm -hmm. and we're, or, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have four computers for everyone to be on. So you're trying to figure out these old devices that you're trying to set up Mm -hmm. so that they can use. It was just the mental weight in some ways of those burdens. Now I had people in my house for lunch, Mm. you know, and it's just dishes get left and Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm the only one who cares. Mm-hmm. And so then I either have to ask them, we all clean up after yourself, clean up after yourself. I don't know. It was just a different way. It was great to have them. Mm-hmm. I love having them home, but it did add burdens to my regular work. Mm-hmm. I don't know if y'all felt that. Oh, I totally oh, felt yeah. that. Yeah. And I kept thinking to myself, would this, would, is this a new burden in the sense of when I think of my grandmother, you know, in 1958, who has four children at this point, she already didn't even have all that freedom, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And so what I feel as a burden was just life for her, you know? And so I just kept thinking about that. I was like, I feel like so much of my irritation and frustration is dis- and discontentment is, is, a, is because I'm a product of the era that I live in, mm-hmm. you know? Which is fair. Right. I mean, there's like, there's a balance of wanting to be aware that We still have it really good. But then also, that doesn't mean that our hardships are not hard. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Technology is rough. Yeah, it is. Well, especially because it's like, like they didn't have technology. Life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they didn't have to deal with the internet. They didn't have Netflix right. like, to alleviate and they their didn't suffering. They have at home school. They were just sitting there. They were like, there was no Zoom school. It was like, no. go, to, go to school. <laughs> That's real talk. Going down that road. Yep. I know. I actually thought about that sometimes, though. The fact that we have technology is how we could know the virus was even happening yes. around the world. Mm-hmm. And then we could know what was happening in Italy when it hit Italy mm-hmm. so hard. Because Twitter and all these news agencies, it's so quick. I, I was thinking about, it, like, if this had happened 100 years earlier, mm-hmm. would it have just come and nothing would have shut down because we wouldn't have known? Well, know? one of the interesting things I had I, I read about were uh, with other, uh, what do you call them, epidemics? Mm-hmm. And how so many of them stayed local because there were no planes, right? You know, and so even the techno- technology of like flight <laughs> is one of the reasons we have this in the way that we do. Yeah, because if you were on a boat, it yeah. would have probably ta- run its course mm-hmm. by the time it even it's got mm-hmm. across the ocean. Yeah, it would stay where it was. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. And the closest thing is like the Spanish flu epidemic. Hi, it's the eighth grade history teacher. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear about the Spanish flu. There's a lot of parallels between, because like things did have to shut down. Mm-hmm. And there was kind of a similar, like, should we have to wear a mask? Should we have to wash our hands? Should we? It just is a reminder of like, that there's nothing new under the sun. Mm-hmm. Like some of the very same attitudes that we encounter today about the sickness are similar to attitudes that we encountered back then and it was spread i mean it spread all over america and it was in other countries too so i know it's going to be interesting in 20 years to read the book about this era yeah, oh, yeah. You know, like what mistakes about. we made yes. what we should have done differently like are people going to be like well it's so simple they should have just whatever oh of course they will uh, yeah we become arrogant yeah. the longer away we get from a absolutely a decade well, let me ask as we've been in this season it's clearly done things to our relationship with god mm-hmm. and as we've been studying yeah you know, like i love what you were saying that you started reading the bible through in a year how has it affected just what you think about god you know as you're walking with him has it had an impact on what you trust God for, hmm. what you go to him for, how you pray. Yes. It affected us financially um, in a way that put me in a position of dependence that I have not been in in a long time. Um, and I, I think I thought I trusted God for financial provision. Um, but like I feel like God showed me that you trusted your calendar. You know, you had all of this stuff lined up that gave you this security mm-hmm. that you would be good. 
Um, but you've always been good, yep. <laughs> you know, even when you can't see it. And so I think um, initially when I had the event cancellations and all of that, I sat up in my bed and I like started to cry and I was like, God, I'm scared. Cause we just moved into a house. Yeah. You know, we moved into a house at the end of January mm -hmm. and then here's March. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay. And I got two children and I have two other adults living in my home and you know, all this stuff. And it's just like, do I feed the birds or not? And of, are you are more like, are you worth more than they? If that's true, you'll be okay. You may not have all that you've had, you may not have all of the good things that you want. Uh, you may not be able to get coffee every other day, but you'll be fine. I think that's a blessing, mm -hmm. honestly, to have to, I don't know, to have to need God in a way that I've always needed him, but to actually recognize it. Mm -hmm. That's good. That is good. I've just been really thankful. We were maybe like two months into quarantine and I just looked at Philip and I was like, I, I like you. Hmm. Huh. And he was like, okay, I like you. I was like, no, think about it. Like, we are on top. Like, we are on top of one another. We're, we're like working from home. Mm. We have two small children. We see, we are the only other adults that we see every day. And I like you. And that's just so, that's, <laughs> that's nice. That's a blessing. That's mm -hmm. good. <laughs> it's like, this mm -hmm. is such a blessing because I'm sure so many marriages have been impacted and you know, not that we haven't had like bickering arguments of just like, I'm just tired of looking at you, <laughs> mm -hmm. but just, we are going to be married, let's see, six years, um, in a couple weeks. And it's just been a really sweet time for us to see God's provision and putting us together, just even in the midst of a pandemic that we are the people that have to make life secure for two little people. And the foundation of that security is our marriage. And even when the world is falling apart, it's still a huge comfort. That's been mm. a really, really big blessing and something that I've been very thankful to God for because he put us together really fast and we did not know each other well when we got married. Mm. And it's been like a roller coaster ride the entire time. And this year has <laughs> just been like, this has been the most peaceful year of our marriage, which is insane oh. because mm. it's like the craziest year of yeah. our life. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. I felt, I felt really similarly thankful that I like being with this person. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, although I did, I, I did really, I noticed it seemed like marriages were going one way or the other. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There've been a lot of people who are like, I've been with you too long. And now this is kind of this moment where I, it's proving mm -hmm. that we're out. And we actually had a friend, you know, say, I can't do this anymore mm -hmm. with, with their marriage mm -hmm. and things. And I wanted to say, don't make a decision in a pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it can show you, I love being with this person. And that's how I felt. I've been so thankful that mm -hmm. we look at each other and we're like, wow, we like this. Mm -hmm. We like being together. I like talking to you yeah. about life. I like doing this with you. But I also, I know this is not normal. Mm -hmm. right. So it's like you want to caution people who don't feel that way yeah. to be like, don't leave just because you don't like to spend 24 hours mm -hmm. yeah. with them all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like, you know, just stick it out a little longer, get through this, mm -hmm. get some counseling. We are getting along so well now. And the only reason that I can say that is because like our first three years of marriage, we were like, what did we do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Our first 10 years of marriage. Oh man, it was just like, <laughs> what did we do? How, do? how, how, who are you? Why? So yeah, not at all trying to say that like, if you're not having an idyllic pandemic marriage, because we, we, just got here mm -hmm. and it's nice to be here exactly i think the <laughs> pandemic has been a light in many ways a light exposes bad things and good things mm -hmm. you know and so i think for some they haven't had to uh be near each other in such an intense way where they see certain things and so now you not only see it but you have to deal with mm -hmm. it and it's the dealing with part that's difficult because i don't know if i love you enough to deal with it i don't know if i have the patience to deal with it mm -hmm. i don't you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and so i could see why uh on both ends there's people like oh i do love you and it's like <laughs> you know what i don't but i didn't realize it because we only went to bed together and that was right. it right yeah it puts you face to face yeah. again it with, does with with someone and you are kind of saying huh 
you know, do we have anything in common? Mm-hmm. Do do we have anything that we're talking about other than our jobs and our work? Mm-hmm. And then it puts you face to face. I think it happens actually to a lot of people when the kids leave. Hmm. You yeah. know, their whole lives mm-hmm. were about I their kids. See that being a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're going to sports practices together. You're talking about their school. You're doing whatever, and then they leave. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people start to struggle right. with the empty nest because mm-hmm. they're like, "That's interesting." Hmm. Which is a good thing. I know it's hard. I don't want to be, you know, super optimistic, but I do want to be um, uh, someone who exhorts people to see that there's some beauty in the difficult stuff, Yeah, you know, because God is not revealing anything mm-hmm. in vain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like he's revealing it so you can lean on him to mm-hmm. deal with it. And in dealing with it, then you become closer to your spouse and closer to God so uh, in the process. Yeah. Well, there's been no other relationship where I've learned how the Lord loves me mm-hmm. than by learning to love another oh, man. like that when you're all in one another's mm-hmm. face all the time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when it says bear with one another in love or love is patient, love is kind, it's not self-seeking, mm-hmm. you know, I can be so self-seeking. Oh, I can be like, hold on, you're sitting down on the couch watching a TV show. Hello. Yeah. I'm, I'm over here doing the dishes. Mm-hmm. You know, I can be so looking at my perspective rather than being like, oh, I'm glad he's getting some rest or mm-hmm. whatever. Right. And I realize, oh, this is how the Lord loves me. Mm-hmm. You know, he's always for me. Mm-hmm. He's always patient to me. He's always kind. Mm-hmm. He's not keeping a record of my wrongs. Mm-hmm. He's bearing with me in love. But I can only know what that is really like when I have to love another that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's marriage is that relationship. Oh, but yes. It involves both the good and the hard. Mm-hmm. Even even friendships. Um, cause I think there's a lot more intentionality that I've had to have with my friends mm-hmm. and the maintenance of those friendships. Especially when you, single folks, they're alone. Uh, oh yeah. Like we're from, you know, we're from even though my, all of my friends are single and they, they don't quarantine at all. Yeah. It's like, if I see you at another brunch, <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> That's why you but can't I come can over this house. Just being by your, you know, I mean, as much as my husband gets on my nerves sometimes, it's like, at least we have a family of four under one roof together. Like, yes, we're on top of each other, but man, that silence of if you're quarantining and you're a single person. So yeah, sorry, I, inter- I interrupted you. You were saying no, you it's need fine. To be intentional with friendships. Yeah, it's, they're just a little a little harder to maintain or to just even have fun because you know there was a section of time where I wasn't letting anybody in the house mm-hmm. um, or vice versa. And I'm pregnant, so I'm high risk. And my mother lives with me, and she's over sixty. I'm like, Mm-mm, I don't trust y'all. And, and I saw you at brunch on Instagram. <laughs> When nobody had a mask on. No, ma'am. You no. can't come over here. No. You sure can. But yeah, it, it's just the, the text check-in is just, it's shallow. It is. Mm-hmm. Um, it was easier to check in in person. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. We do um, Marco Polo a lot with my friends and try to both Marco Polo used to be like completely free and they started charging like $60 a year and we paid it. We just noticed we weren't even talking to people, certain people that live far away that were supposed to come visit that couldn't come visit or my family or so we're like, all right, all right, we're going to, we're going to pay this. I know. Did you find out any other creative ways to keep in touch with people? We had a lot of like, I had a a Netflix watch party, birthday party. (laughs) I did because they had a little what they have that little watch party app and then we did like zoom stuff like I went to a couple of zoom birthday parties I had um when my son had a drive-by birthday party yeah just a lot of time outside like even at school um I do a lot of my classes outside because we don't have to mask up outside because it's hot in Mississippi so it's just nice to be able to socially distance in a circle as opposed to being in the classroom everybody has on masks I have on a face shield and we're just (laughs) trying to it's crazy. I bet you look crazy. very hygienic. I just look in the mirror and I'm like, how is this your life? <laughs> like, how is this any of my You were going, going to work with a shield on your face. It's, it's a strange. I remember being in Target and um, somebody was walking past, but they weren't six feet away. And so I kind of like stepped back so they can like, you know, move along. And I was like, this is so odd that like all of us are looking at each other like you better be six feet away mm-hmm. or, you know, I, I, I never even thought like that before. Or the arrows when people look at you like you went the wrong way <laughs> down like, this I'm aisle. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I, I just wanted to take a shortcut. I thought I was just going. And then I'm like, oh, 
I'm like, people are mad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are mad. They're, They're like, serious. You're supposed to be going that way. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're scared. <laughs> yeah. They They're are. Scared. I'm like, you know, but. Okay. Is there anything, last question, is there anything you feel like you've learned in this season that you want to apply when things go back to normal. air quote normal? Um, Funny thing is I probably won't apply it. I know. I'll try. I'll try. I want to keep the gratitude Mm. for the awareness of the fact that I have a lot of blessings during this Mm -hmm. season that I don't need to be taking for granted, guarding myself from complaining, especially around people to whom my complaints sound ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Mine is... Our life slowed down so much. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we both, both my husband and I travel and do things. And I realized for a short time, I need to limit my travel greatly. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah. just need to say no more. Yeah. Um, we'll get to people pleasing next season, but I need to just be willing to say no. Cause I'm saying, you know, by saying no to something else, I'm saying yes to, yeah. to things that really matter mm-hmm. yeah. sometimes. And I need to do a better job of that. Mike and I also discussed that we both, every like four or five years, take six months where neither of us take any travel. Hmm. You know, that we both do it together yeah. because it was so nice. You know, often, well, he'll be going place one weekend, mm-hmm. I'll be going somewhere the next weekend. And it was just so nice to have weekend after weekend after weekend that we weren't going anywhere. Yeah. And so just to be more thoughtful, we were just saying yes Mm -hmm. without really thinking through. And it's hard because you're asked like sometimes two years in advance. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what two years from now is going to look like. So I'm trying to really think through and do a better job of saying, I can't make that decision until I get my kid's schedule. And just being okay with the no until I know it's a yes for our family. That's good. Yeah, I want to stay needy. You know, I just feel needy now and I think that's such a good thing (laughs) because I think it keeps me low I can make an idol out of productivity often Mm -hmm. and so I think for me to not be able to produce as frequently or to get a return on certain investments and not financial investments like creative investments as quickly as usual it just kind of makes you more like you know what god got it it is what it is i'll be all right i won't die <laughs> you know and so i i just want to maintain that when things get back to normal and the schedule is able to be filled up again mm-hmm. and to say no like i'm a rest mm. so. that's so good because it's it's really hard when you're competent yes to just do go it. forward yeah. and it does it makes you more prayerful i mean i realize i can't make this pandemic go away mm I mean, it's just, I just have to pray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, passage in James 4 where it says, Come now, uh, you who say today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life where you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes? Instead, you ought to say, "If if the Lord wills, we will live and do this. Or do that. And I feel like if that isn't a word mm-hmm. for everybody mm-hmm. in 2020, where it's like, man, we need to be content with mystery mm-hmm. and know that our plans are not rooted in someone sovereign. We are not <laughs> God. And so we cannot control what is to come. And that is not a bad thing mm-hmm. to not know. It's actually, I think, a thing that would give us a lot more peace. Yeah, it's almost been like we were all Nebuchadnezzar. Staring out at our field, saying, "Look at the wonderful world we've created." Like if I, if, if I could go back to January, yeah, I had all my plans lined up, mm-hmm. and you know, then next second, next picture, Nebuchadnezzar's eating grass in the field for the yep. next seven years. Yep, and you know, it just—I I do think it's been one of those things where God is like, "I am still God." Mm-hmm. You know, you humans have done a lot, you've planned a lot, you've, you know, you've built a lot Mm -hmm. but he can still turn this world on a dime oh and he has yes and he has and it's it's really humbling Mm -hmm. he is god i love i mean it's been pretty amazing because our theme for tgcw is steadfastness Hmm. i'm like well i didn't know we were gonna get an object lesson right (laughs) (laughs) pick out a theme or pray for quality god's like i got you so next next theme is joy (laughs) that's what we're gonna go for for next year Okay, 
So favorite things. We've had um, a lot of time this year um, to be at home. So this week's question is, what is the favorite book you've read this past year? My favorite thing that I have read this year, I had never read Harry Potter before. Um, I should have known you were going to talk about witchcraft. I know. I told you. I said I was about to be lovely. I told you. I should have known. So I had never read it because, of course, I'm a good Christian girl and I was not allowed to read Harry Potter. And so I, at the, Such a bad mom. I, at the tender age of 30, um, finally picked up and read the Harry Potter books. And I loved them. And I thought they were so fun. And so um, when you say books, yeah. you mean all of them? I read all of them. I read all, all of them seven. in like two weeks. And they get really, really thick. They do. And I was just like so invested. And I was, I listened to the Harry Potter podcast. I yeah, you, you, were tw- I was like, you were tweeting about oh, it. Oh yeah. I was like, I was, I was like, do you guys know about these books? <laughs> <laughs> the world does. I apparently. know. And I was like, do you guys know? Have you guys read this? Do you think J.K. Yes, Rowling You're is? the last one in the world. And then J.K. Rowling got canceled like right after I read yeah, she books. did. She did. But, and I was like, is it, can I still talk about, the, oh, I can. Okay. So yeah, those are, those are the ones that I read. And then I, um, I learned about Nanny Helen Burroughs this year and there is a book of her like speeches and her writings and her, and she was just this amazing dynamic black woman. Just like, I love her. Say her name again. Nanny. Helen Burroughs. They called her like the the female Booker T. Washington, but mm-hmm. I think she's more dynamic than Booker T. Washington. But so reading her writings has been one of my favorite discoveries of this year. So by this year, I'm I'm gonna mean the last twelve months, not 2020. So I'm a cheat. Um, but the book I, I've been talking about it a lot is uh, "Delighting in the Trinity" by Michael Reeves. Oh. Did I mention this last season? I might have. I feel like you may have. I probably did. That's how you important it was. I mentioned it again. Yeah. Because this is the thing. Anytime you venture into, I think, Trinitarian doctrine via books, it could just be so heady mm-hmm. and confusing. Because the Trinity is already kind of like, okay, one, one God and three persons, Father, Son, spirit spirit isn't jesus jesus isn't the father the father isn't the spirit but how does that work it just gets a it just becomes a thing that makes you want to give up but with delighting in the trinity i felt like it was one of the first books i've read about the trinity that was not um what's the word it wasn't basic in its uh presentation of like that theological doctrine but it also wasn't confusing yet even under all of that it gave me an affection for God, mm-hmm. which is so rare to me in like theological academic academics like books. Where it's mm-hmm. like I read it and I was like, "Ooh, I feel like I love God more." Mm-hmm. And so that's what makes it really special to yeah. me. I think that's the best compliment you could give a book. Yes, mm-hmm. makes me love God more. Yeah, I know, mm-hmm. but that's I also good. love, mm-hmm. and that's a difference. That's and the no should yield loving. It should. I mean, it's God. Why is it nothing? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. That's good. Well, and I'm not saying this um, to flatter either of you. I read both of your books Yay. This, this year, and Aww. they're both excellent. Thank Aww. you. Both excellent. So I always say it the wrong way. Gay girl, good God. Don't blaspheme yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> By Jackie is excellent. And then Jasmine's book, From Mother to Son. Is it From Mother, Mother to Son? To Mother to Son. Mm-hmm. Um, both both just excellent and with both of them i felt like i got to visit with you so hmm. even though i can see you you know it felt like i was i was hearing from both of you that's so a writer good. that's a compliment too to a writer. Good. but i would say spiritually a book that really hit me i've been i've been really struck by this whole i just feel like we keep watching christians in our world turn away from the faith mm-hmm. yeah you know, whatever you're calling it deconstruction or whatever mm-hmm. And I have to say what it does for me is I say, dear Jesus, keep me. Yeah. And so I read this book by John Flavel. Um, mm-hmm. He's from the 1600s or somewhere back there. It's called Keeping the Heart because I really just want my heart to be kept mm-hmm. in this world. I just want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah. yeah that's, that's what I want. But then the book I would say that was probably the best book I read. We talked about this last night. Mm-hmm. It was The Warmth of Other Sons. I, it has been sitting on my nightstand for probably four years, 
and it's really thick. Mm-hmm. And so I kept saying, not, not yet, <laughs> not yet, not yet. And a friend, Jen Oshman, did a book club on it. Mm-hmm. And so that finally made me mm-hmm. read it because we were doing a virtual book club. So yeah. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. I got to do it. She tells stories so well. She does. So She's good. weaving all these stories. It's one of the best historical books I've read yeah. because mm-hmm. she does it through story. Yeah. And so I just highly recommend it. Anyway, yeah. it was just so well. I love a well done book. Yeah. And it's just well done. Yeah, she really. has a new book called Cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't read. read it. I just started it. Okay. Of course you did. You'll be done by next week. Uh, nah. History well, teacher. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, thanks for listening to this special bonus episode of Let's Talk. Lord willing. Hello, James. We will be back with season two in the early part of 2021, talking about how to apply biblical wisdom to everyday life. We hope that you will join us then. You can also find all of the episodes from season one of Let's Talk at tgc.org forward slash podcast or wherever you listen to podcasts. The Gospel Coalition supports the church in making disciples of all nations by providing resources that are trusted and timely, winsome and wise, and centered on the gospel of Jesus Christ.